Welcome guys, Technical Alphas. Today we are going to learn how to use my MySQL command line client. Command line client. And here we are going to learn how to develop databases, insert, develop tables and insert data into the tables. So watch the video to the end and don't forget to subscribe to the channel Technical Alphas. So, so we are going to go step by step from beginner to advanced so don't miss any don't miss any don't forget to subscribe let's continue the first step we are going to do is show the database so you're going to type show database. then terminate after terminating press enter now these are the databases available within our within our system within our system now we already have these databases but we are going to learn how to create another database so what we are going to say is create database then we name our database for example let's say saimo then we terminate press enter it has said query okay that means that there has not been an error in what in our code so let's see whether Saima has also appeared. We say again, show databases. Then we terminate. If you press enter, you'll see that Saima exists as a database here. So our database has been created, and that's how we can create our database. The next step we have to do is to create a table within our database. But before we create a table, you have to use Saimo, because there are very many databases. You have to tell the computer that I'm going to use such and such a database to create a table within it. So we'll say use Saimo. Then we terminate, press enter. It says our database has been changed. So we have chosen our database we are going to use. The next step is, is we are going to create a table within Saimo. So we say create table user then we open our what? We open up brackets now we're going to add attributes or columns that are going to be in our that in our table user the first column will say like id we give it something like like integer then we give it a length of like 11 then we call this the primary Key. Okay. Then comma. Our next field will be like name. Then we give this a variable character. A length of something like 30. You can put the length you want. Then we say it's not null. Nah. It means it has to be filled. The, the next attribute will be something like email. Email will give it a variable character. Open up and say something like 30. Then say also not null. Not null. For this time, let us just end here. Then we close and terminate. Press enter. Then it says our query is okay. Then that means our table has been created. So let us show the tables and see whether the tables exist. So let's say show tables. Terminate, then press enter. In, in tables inside we have one, and that's called user. That's called user. Inside we have one table, and that table is called user. So let us see how user has been created. We say describe, describe user. Then we terminate and say enter. This is how user has been created. ID is the primary key. The, the rest of them are not null. So let us insert some data into table user. So we'll say insert into user values. Then open up. And then open our quotes. The first column is ID, so we'll say ID is V1, comma. The second one will be name. Name will be something like John. Then we close, we close the quotes, then comma. The third column is email, let's say like John at 
gmail.com. Then we, then we close the quotes. Sorry. Then after here we close and terminate. Press enter. Our query is also okay. Then that means this that has been entered into the database. So to see where that has been entered, we select everything from. We select everything from the tables. So now we say select a posterity which stands for all from our table, which is called user. We terminate and press enter. You see, John has been added into our table. So you can add as more as more people you want. For example, in this case, I can come here and change this to sorry, change this to two. And instead of John, I say something like Joe. Then here I come and say Joe at gmail.com and then press enter it is also okay so if i select everything again you see there are two people so you can add more and more data into your that into your table using the insert the insert into code so the next thing we have to do is update for example the name is john you want to change john to tom but the rest of the column you don't want to affect the rest of the row so what will we do is say update update the table name which is user set the name equaling set the name equaling to Tom where where ID the primary key where the primary key is equal to one then terminate okay. press enter it says query okay one row has been affected so let's see whether this has changed we select everything from user again and see now up here it has been john now it has changed to tom so this is how it works we have changed the name from john to tom now this that's how you update your what you update your work in your table so the next thing we have to do we have like column ID, column name, and column email. What if we need another column like password, but we have not included it before? There we say alter table user. The table name is user. Add column password. Okay. Which is a variable character with a length of 30 and it's not null then we terminate press enter query okay two rows have been affected so let's select everything and see uh, you see now we have another column called password here which has not been the case before now we can add as more columns as we want by using the alter table command, okay? Now, we have seen how we can update, how we can select and how we can insert data into the what? To the database. But how can we delete? You say delete from the table name which is user. Uh, what do you want to delete? Let us delete like Tom. Uh, let us delete Joe. Now we delete from user name which is equal. Let us go with the ID. ID is equal to one. We have forgotten the where clause. Delete from user where ID is equal to one. Terminate, press enter, the query is okay. Delete from user where ID is equal to one. So if you select everything again, you see now we only have the call we start from column two where it's Joe. So Tom has been deleted, and that's how we do what? That's how we insert, update, 
create and alter our tables and select everything from the what? From the tables. This is the way we can use MySQL command line client. And the last and final thing I, I will do is how to delete the database. So we come here and delete another database. For example, let us show all the databases around. Show databases. Show databases. For example, you have like Bukede TV. It has happened twice, but different spellings. So let us say like drop table. Drop table. Bukede. Drop table, book it. Then book it the TV underscore. This is TV. Then we terminate. Press enter. Oh, there has been an error. Drop table. Spelling. Oh, sorry, it's drop database, not drop table. Drop database. Okay, then. Shift underscore TV. Then, if we run this, it should work very okay. So, if we show databases again, show databases again, okay, the TV no longer exists. We have book the TV. We, are going, we can also drop that one. We can also drop that one. Also drop the book the TV. Drop database. B U K U double D. Shift underscore TV. Then we terminate and press enter. It has also been deleted. So if we show show databases, there's no book there or book at the TV. So that's how you delete databases. Thank you for watching the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel Technical Alphas. See you in the next video.